Hi, my name is Eric Wallström. I work as a technology strategist at Nexus. And I would like to show how we have set up our product Nexus Hybrid Access Gateway for the skin interop that taking place at the Cloud Identity Summit in Napa Valley in the beginning of July. SKIM it is a standard uh, that defines how to package identity information into JSON and it also defines an API how to send these uh, information to different types of systems, cloud-based systems, internal systems. And it's a very important standard when it comes to easily provision users and do onboarding and offboarding of new systems. Uh, and that's an important part when it comes to bringing your valuables, ad valuable identities to as many places as possible. So first I will access the administration interface to show how it is configured and I will do that through the Nexus Hybrid Access Gateway. Uh, I can use any type of authentication method, EIDs, certificates, SAML, but in this case I will use invisible token, which is a two-factor authentication method. Uh, that looks like just a normal username and password method, but under the surface it is a oath compliant shell response mechanism. So uh, once logged in, I can get access to the different resources that I, that I have access to. Uh, for example, I can access my remote my remote desktop that's on the server inside the firewall. I can access it, access, it, access it through our um, reverse WebSocket proxying and it loads inside the web browsers without any plugins or anything. And because I'm an administrator, I can also access the administration interface. And when I do that, I'll get automatically logged on using Things and On as I did to the remote desktop resource because I configured that. Once logged in, uh, you can see a new section here called Identity Orchestration. And I have already configured three uh, orchestration channels. Identity, or Identity Orchestration is our way to do provisioning, and we do that using plugins. You can upload uh, new plugins to the interface. I've uploaded uh, a small plugin to create users in Media Wiki. Uh, we can create users in Google, but today we will look deeper into the Skim plugin that uses OAuth 2 to authenticate. And different types of cloud and internal systems, systems want different types of information. And we can create, we can uh, aggregate this information from a lot of different channels. We can read it from SAML assertions or certificates if that's used to authenticate to our system. We can also read it from our users in our system and if they are linked to users from Active Directory or other types of LDAPs, we can read attributes from, from those. In this case, from this demo, uh, I will send uh, attributes to Salesforce uh, from the user import files. And you can see here I read the username from a customer attribute and family names and given names. Here is the URL that's uh, the scheme endpoint at Salesforce that I will send my users to. And this is the OAuth 2 authorization settings for this, uh, for this specific channel. So apart from defining these channels that combines a plugin with types of information and authentication to send information, uh, we also have a new access rule, a new type of access rule uh, that when it's applied to different resources uh, we will force identity orchestration uh, to those systems. So in this case when I protect a resource with these specific access rules identity orchestration has to be performed uh, using the channel I just showed you. If we drill deeper into uh, identity federation. Uh, we can act both as a service provider and the identity provider can log on to us and get access to the different systems. And in this case, I will act as an identity provider to Salesforce and I will protect this, uh, this Salesforce SAML based authentication 
using a couple of different uh, access rules. Uh, I will have to be logged on somehow. I will be part of a specific group of users uh, that um, uh, I used right now for this uh, orchestration demo. And the most important one, to, to, access the, to access this Salesforce resource, I have to be provisioned to Salesforce and user has to be deprovisioned when I remove this user. So if we also have a look at the Cisco WebEx resource, it's just a web-based uh, resource that we do reverse proxying to, and you can see here that we protect, protect uh, this resource with almost the same rules, but user has to be provisioned to Cisco. And we send the same type of information, but we use this basic authentication to provision users to Cisco. And I could potentially enable SingSNL to this resource, and I can uh, have any type of, of uh, SingSNL method to this um, web-based resources. So I can do basic authentication or cookie form-based authentication that do, that's opposed to a specific page, or even adaptive SSO that's uh, a way for us to automatically find out a way to authenticate users. And when we create users in Cisco, uh, we will assign a username and password for this specific user that's currently logged on. And we will save those that information into an SSO domain that, that's specific for a user and uh, this specific resource. So if I say that uh, I will use a single as anon, a text-based thing as anon, and I will get the information from the SSO domain Cisco WebEx. And uh, that will that SSO domain will be populated with the information uh, that we uh, created when provisioning this user. But in this case, I will not do any single sign on to these resources at the moment. And that's about it when it comes to <coughs> to configuration. If I log in with a user that I, that I have already created, I will log in using another method and the user I created was skill2 and once I'm logged in I will get a different portal than, than my, when I logged in as an administrator because I have less, re, uh, less access to different systems but I do get the Salesforce and the WebEx uh, resources here and when I click on the Salesforce resource the access rules uh, protects this resource and I will be automatically created at Salesforce. Once that's done um, in a su successful manner, I will uh, uh, get a SAML based single sign on to the Salesforce um, system. So a short maintenance notification. But once I'm in, I can now see that this user scheme 2 that I just created is the one that's uh, currently logged on. So if I click on the WebEx resource, almost the same thing will happen. The user will be created, but we will do a reverse proxying of this specific resource. And if I would have configured things as none, and uh, I would be, um, I could uh, automatically log in a user. Currently, the users are created in another system that's than this public one. So if I log out this user and if I search for this user in the administration interface, I will find this user and when I delete this user I will be uh, informed that it will also be removed from Salesforce and Cisco. So let's do that. The user will be removed from Portfiles and Salesforce and Cisco. And just to show uh, how it looks in Salesforce, here's the list of all my users. And the new user scheme 2 uh, is now deactivated. Okay, thanks for listening.